this liturgy as a memorial liturgy for Peter and Mary, Michael and Richard Solomon, requested by their loving family, and in honor of the Immaculate Conception and the deceased members of the Holy Rosary Sodality. Joseph is my favorite ever saint. And he's my favorite for two reasons. Not because, not only because his name is Joseph, which is a very nice name, but Joseph teaches us two very important lessons that we can use every day in our Christian lives. First lesson he teaches us is by his silence. You never hear him talk. You never hear him say a thing. All the work that Joseph did, he did quietly. There's so much value to Joseph's silence. You know people who work, who do good things, and they never stop talking about what they did, and blah, 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 and I did this, 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 that, 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 all oh, my head. While you see people who do great, wondrous things, and no one ever knows what they did. And you know what Jesus says in the gospel? When you give, don't blow the trumpet in front of you. When you give, don't let one of your hands know what the other hand did. And Joseph lived by this value even before Jesus grew up and began to teach this. His silence teaches us so much. And because he was a silent man, and because he was a good man, when he knew that his wife, his fiance, Mary, was pregnant and not from him, from someone else, he decided to divorce her quietly. Why? Because he wanted to protect her reputation. Now, I want you to imagine your son is engaged to someone and she turns out to be pregnant. What, is, what are you gonna say about her and her family and her sisters and her dog and her cat? Endless gossip and trash to her reputation. Joseph wanted to divorce her quietly because he was a righteous and just person. And he teaches you and me this afternoon how important it is for us to guard our tongue and only say things that are good, that upbuild, that support, that help, and stay away from everything opposite. That's the first lesson. Second lesson we learn from Joseph. He was so brave when it came to his relationship with God. I'm sure you and I, if we were in his place, and the angel comes to us and says, don't be afraid, it's the Holy Spirit. We're gonna wake up and say, uh-huh. Maybe I had too much wine last night. Maybe there's something off with my head, but I'm out. What does he say? What does he do? He does exactly what the angel of the Lord tells him. Because he was brave and because he trusted in God no matter what, even when the odds were all against him. You and I can learn a lot from this because when we pray, when we ask for things from God, if things we ask for don't come our way, and we start even <laughs> saying negative things about God himself. We want our way, not God's way. Joseph said yes 
whatever God's will is. Lord, I trust you. Lord, I know you know what's best more than I do. And that's why he gave us Christmas. If he had said no, there'd be no Christmas. There'd be no <coughs> celebration of Jesus' birth. But Joseph said yes, supported God's plan, and made God's plan a reality. You and me are called to do the same, to realize God's plan, to serve God's plan and the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray this afternoon and ask for his intercession. Ask him to help each and every one of us guard our tongues, value silence, and work without blah, 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 and give without the same. And two, let us put our full, full trust in God, be courageous and brave, and follow God's will, even when it doesn't look too pleasant. Amen.